first really major piece of sculpture that I've done in my career. I've done a lot of sculpture, but I've never done a 32 foot tall one. And so that was a big, big kind of The East Washington Fluff site at 5th Street and Buckeye Road was once covered with more than 6,000 tons of industrial waste. Joe Willie Smith, an artist, musician, and designer, was commissioned to create a sculpture for the Brownfields project that would pay homage to the history and unique construction of the once blighted property. The inspiration actually came from the need of of Harrison Properties. They needed a piece of sculpture that was educational, that talked about the helical piers and how they used those to basically restore a super fun site. And so the, the site and the helical piers were my initial inspiration because I had to think around how those peers worked at the site to do what they did. And then think of a creative way to make sculpture using the helical piers and then my own statement, which was using found objects. And so I thought, well, there's a whole lot of stuff buried in the ground here that's been here for years. So I'm gonna use that as part of the sculpture. The helical piers are these tall, basically giant drill bits. And what they, they did is they placed over 400 of these in, over the entire site. And what they do is they, they drill down to bedrock and then when they stop, they know they've hit stable ground. And they just keep doing that. And they did a grid of those over the entire uh, site. Once that's done, then this base represents the concrete that's poured over top of those, and it basically caps the site, and it, the piers support that huge slab of concrete. I went to the site over for about a month, and I walked the site and looked at it, and I looked at the piers, and measured them and studied them, um, until finally the shape of the site, which is this concrete wall here, is what gave me the final idea for how I was going to go about doing it. And at first I thought, well, I'll just do one concrete wall that represents the shape of the site, but it looked boring. And so I put three of them together and decided that the piers would look pretty cool if they were mounted in the tops of those. And it would also give it the scale I wanted. And so that's kind of, it was a kind of a mishmash of visiting the site a lot and, and becoming familiar with um, all of the, uh, the materials that were being used to restore the site. And then the workers there with the heavy machinery were really cool. They dug down like several feet in the earth and made these huge mounds of material that I could go through. And so I had a, a wealth of material that they dug up for me and then they were finding stuff for me. And so that stuff starts to tell a history of the site. And it tells a very detailed history all the way back to the Hohokam Indians. I found objects on that site, uh, things that were probably from the Chinese that lived there, um, then all of the industrial uses at the site. It just goes on and it, it was just plentiful. I wanted to find things that were really interesting um, that represented kind of a time capsule. Um, and things that, of course, were going to stand up to time in, embedded in concrete. But the main purpose was to find very interesting objects that really represented the time scale that I was dealing with. And I think I found those. So. The most unusual thing was actually a mono, which was from the Hohokam Indians. 
It was an over 800 year old object and so that's got a very special placement on the base. It's right underneath the plaque that talks about the sculpture because that was to me the most sacred object that I found. I found a lot of cool things but when I found that mono I thought I gotta give this a special place and I did. Joe Willie's experience as a graphic reporter helped him to achieve his artistic purpose. Part of what I would have to do in that job is explain how things work. And so it was a kind of a natural process for me to go out and find out exactly what these things do, um, get all of the information from the site, and then start to create a piece that was educational. And my main purpose, believe it or not, was to create something that was not only aesthetically pleasing, but that told a very accurate story that was educational. In my work, I don't like to tell people what things are. You know, if all of the objects that are embedded in this sculpture, some of them I don't even know what they are. And so I want people to stand there and figure it out, to use their brains to say, well, what is that? And there is a legend that tells about the site and, and, and about how the hel helical piers were used. But the mystery there is all of the objects that are in, in the concrete that you have to stand there and figure out. And it's kind of interesting to, to look at all those things and try to see if you know what they are. I think that Harrison Properties needs to really be honored for their efforts to restore these kinds of sites and that they're pioneering this whole process. Uh, and I think it's uh, a pretty amazing thing that they're doing to go back into neighborhoods and restore sites and to basically create jobs, to create beauty, and to help to kind of bring the city up and make it beautiful again. While working on the project, Joe really discovered a connection between the site, the sculpture, civilization, and the environment. The one thing that I started to realize when I was working on this is how this sculpture and the site kind of reflects our civilization in a really, really amazing way. It, it, it points to how wasteful we, we have gotten, how much um, disregard we've had for our surrounding environment. But it also points to the hope that now we're starting to do something about it. And it, it's like this story that goes from really wonderful things, from the Hohokam Indians and the Chinese and the neighborhoods that used to be there, to the industrial use of the site, which was devastating. And now back to a new industrial use that is saving the site and restoring the whole neighborhood. And so it, it kind of reflects the state of the world right now. That, that whole site does in a very wonderful kind of way.